Welcome to the Better Health Podcast, hosted by Discam. In this mental health episode, Lasizu and Monib Josephs open up on how to be kind to your mind. Welcome to the Better Health Podcast, hosted by Discam. <laughs> My name is Le Cizre. I am a multi-award-winning media personality, and I am a YouTuber, entrepreneur, I've got taxis there and there, you know, I can be a bit dangerous there and there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet you for so long. Oh, you are the social media pioneer. Oh, okay. My yeah. name is Muni. I'm a former professional goalkeeper, I'm hailing from Mitchell's Plain. Um, all the way in Cape Town. Um, I'm coaching at the moment now and such a pleasure to be in your company and discussing such important matters. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to talk about like this topic because like for me, it touches home. It's really tough when you go through like mental health and you start dealing with signs of depression, anxiety. I think just being in the media and the spotlight. What is so crazy is the fact that everybody just sees personalities as you know that way has been paid for them yeah. they don't know it all started somewhere we all have backgrounds 100%. and we had to work really hard to get to places like we are now yeah but we had our challenges as well especially from the community where i come from i come from mitchell's plain oh where you know it's a it's, Wait, do you come from the ghetto so mitchell's plain is really a gang fisted the Cape Flats, right? Like how bad? So we grew up in, in communities where there are a lot of gangs. There's not much happening, not much that you can see and look up to. Mm -hmm. So these are our role models. And with them being our role models, you think, you know what? A gangster is all I want to be. That I won't lie. That was my dream. Yeah. Because in our communities, all we do is we walk around with our heads down every day. Yeah. It's survival mode. Damn. Fortunately for me, meeting cultures and and personalities has traveled the world and i'm grateful for that and you as well i'm sure this is well our bag ones are so similar yours is a little bit dangerous like for mine like my world is like i was just in such a box i was born into a home where um it was my mom and my sister yeah i grew up knowing that oh man this is this is it's normal to be indoors so that's where the the wild creativity started you know, I started just being creative in that in that aspect. So different worlds, but definitely in the hood. I hear yeah. you. And, I hear you, Nassiz, and, and yes, different world. Yeah. In my instance, my mom was my nurturer, my care, and that. But she she for she never understood what a boy. This is how I was. A boy. Thinking. Yeah. She, she she doesn't understand what a boy was thinking. So my information and my way of life or way of thinking came from my friends. Yeah. This is young, this yeah. is street life. Yeah, yeah. If I look at my mother today, I got all my character from my mother. She's a strong, independent woman that carried a whole family and provided for her family, no matter what it was, she was there. But wait, how did you get into football? I was 10 years old. Okay. In our communities goes crazy, but there's always a field where football is happening on weekends. So me and my friends would run all the, way, all the way to the field. So we would get on top of the tree and I'd look over and it'll be a completely different world. From that time, I wanted to become a professional footballer. I wanted to be a footballer. But this is where my mom comes into the picture again. I got selected to be, to represent the Western province team. It's like a, you know, it's Joburg and all the cities and travel. But my mom was the one who made it possible for me. <laughs> so this is what happened. She took me by the hand with a ring in her hand. A ring? Yes. Which ring? The ring that she kept while she was married to my dad, which I have no idea who he is, took me by the hand, took that ring, and went and sold it. Oh no. To provide for me to go on this journey to see my dreams. I went on a trip, 10 years old, came back, and I told the mom, you are never gonna do something like that again. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make something of my life because of this, what you sacrificed. Sure. Your story is, it's like, I, 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 I relate to your story so much. I just wish I had the opportunity with my mom 
And I think that's one of the things that till this day traumatize me. You know, I deal with it and I, you know, I seek ways to continue living life without going back and looking for answers. And I say this because um, during 2007, 2008, 2009, I was around about like eight, nine, ten, and um, being gay, you know, being part of the LGBTI community was just foreign. Like yeah. In the community that I come from, it was looked down upon. People like you, you talk ill about him, etc. And my mom at some point was really trying to make sure that I don't fall into that trap, you know, by ensuring like Valentine's Day, do you have a girlfriend? I can go buy you a rose. Can you do this? I'm just like, okay, what? Like it would be overwhelming and confusing at the same time. Like what's going on? Like yeah. what is this woman doing, you know? And I think it's normal. Yeah. And so now I'm telling this friend, I'm like, I have a crush on this boy. I made a video about this boy and showed my friend. He was like, oh no, send it to me. He was like, oh, I'll keep it safe. Did the video not spread? Now the guy waited for the perfect time and he just comes from nowhere and pushes me. To the quick guy you like, right? Yes. He was also just like, why would you do that? You know, and understandably so, but yeah. it was a secret, you know? Yeah. And then after that, like, I just found myself uttering words of, is it because I'm gay? Is it because I'm gay? Like, yeah. yeah, you know, just, and, and yeah. yeah and dispensive mechanism. Dispensive mechanism. My mom got called in, same time. There was a disciplinary hearing and they, the school didn't know what to do. My mom was like, listen, my boy, you're not going to be gay in my house. You are not going to do that to me. You are, listen, you're, you're my only son. L babes, I will, I will make your life hell. My mom cut everything, like from just the little fifty rand I would get once a week. I didn't get tuck shop money. I would now have transport because she would pick me up. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to arrange because I played sports. Oh, I'm on my own, teenager. That's Te literally fifteen. I'm on my own, and only now I can kind of let you know how I was feeling. Yeah. I was feeling very anxious that, again, I am being put to a corner to fend for myself. I'm fending for myself at school. Yeah. I'm fending for myself at home. I'm fending for myself with my friends in the hood because I'm the only one that's different. It's like, you are the light. Yeah. You are, whenever you, wherever you go, you attract bees, mosquitoes, flies, everything. That is just frustrating on its yes. own. People that suffer from mental health and anxiety and depression have a superpower that they haven't identified or known. No, generally speaking, so because you see you see something in a different light. Yeah. But like you know, when you are depressed and you have like anxiety and all of this stuff, it's just for me, you are anxious and you are so worried about this is because you don't know how to control it. It's it's just yeah. the day you learn how to go. On and off. Ah, oh, the world is your oyster. Yeah. yeah. And that is so important because the, especially our generation of today with social media and everything now, like 100% you are a pioneer of the industry. Thank you. And then we have our youngsters coming through as well, the generation of today, who, with so much influences being around and all their things, for them to know how to be able to deal with it, that is so important that your message gets out to them. And I'm inspired by how you dealt with it. Because like I say, yes, we are from totally different worlds. Yeah. But we are so much relatable because it's the same thing, you know? We all have the same issues, but just in different colors. You know, one has it in blue, one has it in pink, but we all have the same issue. And I think right now, with just how mental health is moving and the, 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 the conversation around it, yeah, I love where it's going. But I'm a bit scared, especially for us public figures. You know, um, I say us as public figures because there is no school. There's no manual yeah, to be yeah. a public figure. You didn't go to university to be who you are today. You know, every day it's a new trial and error. You, you tried this, you tried that. And I remember, you know, growing up, you had your little scandals, uh, you know, and I, I don't know, like, especially when you were in the midst of your scandals and this is what's currently going on in your life. Like, 
what is going on in your mind? Because you were grown. Like, it's not like me. Like, yeah, I was a yeah. kid, you know, and like, I was going through all of that stuff as a kid in public. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was also crazy. Okay, wait, stop with your scandals. Yeah. <laughs> but scandals. It wasn't that serious, my scandals, but more of, I was playing football on an everyday basis for what, five years straight with no break. And then a tournament came up in Cape Town where they asked me, then I asked the club, hey, listen, I don't want to be playing in this tournament. Can I have a break and we can give others a chance? You know? <laughs> don't worry, I'll tell them that it's Safa, we're going to be resting. I thought, it's party time. It's time to chill. December, it's in Cape Town. I'm going to be having fun. Um, December came and my mindset was all, all, it's a holiday. The tournament came around. It was me, Itukune, and Bonshani. <laughs> the coach came and spoke to me and said, Mani, listen, I don't need you to play. I just want you to be a part to motivate and get the guys going, keep the team together. I said, I can do that for you, coach. Staying in Cape Town in the hotel, in Cape Town in December, beautiful weather. Cape Town was rocking for me still. Why, Sha? Not preparing for the tournament, of course, you know. The tournament came around. We played our first game. I can't recall who the first game was. And then we did well. And Itokune decided, listen, no, 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 he's, he's a bit injured, right? And I thought to myself, no problem, he's injured. I have, there's another goalkeeper that I'm going to be motivating this week because we play in Nigeria. Okay. Two days before the game, the coach tells me, maybe you're going to play. How you in? Not being mentally prepared, nothing. Let's use it, the game came. First incident happened, ball pops up, hits my chest. And with that, me going for the ball, the Nigerian striker puts his body in the way. And that means I hit him from the back. Yes, and falls over penalty. Penal oh. One nil down, we go one nil down. At that moment, I, I don't mind that. I, can, any, I understand everybody makes a mistake, so I deal with that quickly. Listen, 10 minutes later, they hit me with another goal. Now, all of a sudden, 50,000 people in the crowd is looking at you. And, and you can feel it. Not just feel it. You can hear the one saying, why the f*** is he playing? And this is what you just your mind is going to tell you now. Damn. So you go into this, into the halftime comes, a 2-0 down. Got into the second half. Game starts. Five minutes into the game, they hit me with a goal that shouldn't be a goal. Cool, that's fine. 40,000 people know, and whoever watched the game know that I had a bad day. Of course. Fine. I'm a footballer, I can deal with it. I get home to my mom, I say, can I mean relax a little bit by you? I just, you know, that's my comfort, that's of my Of course, it's, my it's, that's where you calibrate yourself. You know, you're charging yourself, it's like an iPhone. You know, when it says 10%, you gotta 100%. And I sat and we're chilling, me and she. And we're watching the, game, watching the news, she wants to watch the news now. Cool, mom, let's watch the news. Me and you. And so Keelan Balula comes on. I just hear him. You know, I think it was my fun. I was, did really bad. Bunch of losers. We need Joseph to be embarrassed. He embarrassed the country. He embarrassed his family. And he embarrassed his mother who was in the stands. You no, no, it's fine. This is right. I always say, when the corporate world, yeah. you make shit in the corporate world, you got your boss to deal with. Yeah, yeah. In the limelight, we have the whole country to deal with. So you don't go out, you don't go nothing, you don't go nowhere. And it's been, that was turmoil for me. Yeah. So everywhere you go, yeah, you're a bunch of losers and rah, 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 rah. For me, that's how important my mom is. My mom told me as well, Mani, this is your challenge. This is what you wanted to do. This is what you wanted your whole career. So because people are hammering you now, you want to give up? That is all part of the challenge. Accept your challenge. This is, this is what I'm on though. Damn. I don't want to. Fatima, isn't it? I know. Like, it, it, I noticed something. Every time you speak about your mom, you know, you just brighten up. It's like yeah. she's an anchor for you. And, she, you know, that's, that's and, I, and, I, and I appreciate that because I was someone at some point who was so resentful, especially for after my mom had passed on because... I was just so angry that like, why would you pass on the moment start becoming a star? She passes on at a very crucial point in my life. I was 18. Um, luckily I'd finished writing my matric um, in December and we were preparing for my matric dance. And so throughout the year, um, my mom had then changed from being a is it a medical nurse or just a nurse? Nurse, 
and she became a businesswoman. So she then learned how to train other nurses to become like um, caregivers and yeah, all of yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, like her business just went spiraling down, you know. That just caused so much stress for her because she's someone also who doesn't vocalize and talk about it. She was just someone who just kept it in, put a smile on her face. And that's where also I kind of learned how to just internalize and deal. You yes, just, yes. people, someone talks about you. Hey, keep going, you smile and you wave, eh? And that, you don't know how much it does to you inside. Oh, you're breaking yourself. You're breaking inside. yourself so much to a point where she developed a heart condition. And her heart was just in love, yeah, from, from the stresses and anxiety. Then she passes on. And your story of just having her as an anchor just, I wouldn't say triggers me, but it makes me feel secure, you know, because immediately when she passes on, um, I just skyrocketed. I just said, I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to allow just these, how I'm feeling, my anxiety, my anxiousness to define me, you know, for now. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out along the way, but I'm just going on this loose tangent. Yeah. I'm, I am who I am. I am who I say I am. And I am here for a mission and a goal. However I achieve it, I will achieve it and I will see it through. I just found myself sinking in and in and in and in. And I remember one day I sat down with myself and it was the early, early AMs of the morning, 2 AM. And I was like, I'm losing myself, you know, I'm losing the fact that my job is fun. I'm losing the fact that now I have to please people I don't know. Yeah. I have friends that are not friends. Who are my real friends? And I would wear my heart on my sleeve because I genuinely wanted to be loved and yes. longed from just insecurities and all of that stuff. And that's when I made a decision that I need to check myself into a wellness center, a mental wellness center because... I am going to now be exposed to things that I don't know. Yeah. If I don't take this decision, course. which I can be confident and say, I don't know what suicide is. I don't know what hurting myself is. I don't know using substances to escape is. So I'm going to now expose myself to this and there are repercussions. Yes. And I'm someone who is always, I wouldn't say has been always safe, but you know, you play with fire, yes, you, you will get bent. Yeah. And I, that's why till this day, I recommend everybody to go to a wellness center. Yeah. When I left, I left so charged. It's like immediately when I stepped out, I was like, I am ready for the world. Where is the nearest party? Yeah, it's yeah, in yeah, yeah. City. Yeah, and yeah. I literally went there in hiding because also, you know, everyone's just so concerned about my one. And that's also what's scary about mental health is that back then also we so frowned upon we yeah, didn't yeah. know what is like yeah. people thought i was crazy yeah. no i'm not crazy i'm just tired and yeah. i just need to re charge myself and i went to a party i went to sun city did they not step me on the stage having the time of my life oh, with the dj and they're like wasn't this guy in therapy just like a few days ago and i'm like oh my god and then they're like nah this guy checked himself out I'm like no no that's not the story I finished my 21 days and I that's why I can deal with this now. You've even expanded my view on the mental, what is it, what the, 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 the thing that you went? Mental wellness center. Mental wellness center, because like you say, we all have that idea now that they're going crazy. No. But you even educated me. And that is amazing. This is like, she's only the future awaits you, even, even brighter future awaits you from what? You've done to deal with how to how to handle things. It's unbelievable. So we've spoken about a lot, and I think we should get an expert in. Um, she is a practicing psychologist, Sunim Nairam. I love her, and I just want her to kind of give everyday, you know, people that are dealing with the same issues we are dealing with um, a few tips and just how to deal. You know, I, I had to figure this out. Every day, how to deal with this. And I think just for the person watching at home, what is their go-to? Hey, Lassizu and Muneeb. Great conversation. So I think I think there's a general misconception that if you're in the spotlight, you are fine and you're not experiencing any mental health issues. And obviously that is not true. Everyone experiences mental health issues and it's because we're human. And I think that Something that is not really spoken about a lot is that 
There are specific intersectionalities to identity that impact mental well-being, such as your race, being a person of color, your sexuality, coming from an underprivileged background, um, experiencing self-esteem issues, especially with social media these days and the pressures of social media, being in a country that is experiencing blackouts and intergenerational trauma and coming from a society that doesn't recognize mental health. And all of these things play a huge part in our mental health. And I think, you know, I would love to give a quick fix to to deal with mental health struggles. But I think that's something that is so important to remember is that we are all facing a challenge when it comes to our mental health, whether it's anxiety, whether it's burnout, whether it's the pressures of our job, um, whether it's relationship struggles and family issues. Um, and I think what's important to remember is that no matter how big or small your issues are, it is still an important issue. So never minimize your experience and never say that, no, my issues are not big enough, so I don't need the help. Um, like I said, there aren't any quick fixes to mental health, but just to remember that it's a shared experience and look for solace and support with the people closest to you, such as your friends and your family, and even reach out for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help, whether this is going to see a therapist, going to see a psychologist. There are so many free mental health clinics in South Africa that offer these services. There are psychologists that offer pro bono sessions. Um, There are groups and mental health support groups that also offer this type of support. So don't be afraid to reach out for help. We're all in this together. And um, yeah, we really need to have more of these conversations. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health issues and is in need of help, visit sadek.org or call 080-012-1314. You are not alone.